We're here at Sebring. We've come back to look at a flight design airplane. Now we've done plenty of coverage on Flight Design's CT series over the years, but there's some new stuff now. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Tom Pagini here from Flight Design USA. And Tom, what's this sign all about and what can you tell us about ADSB compliance and the Flight Design CT series? Well, Dan, this is the newest version of the CT-LSI, the fuel-injected version of the CT made by Flight Design, and we're calling it the 2020 edition. Uh, Dynon has just come out with a compliant GPS source, and when that is matched up with their 261 Skyview extended squitter transponder, that's a mouthful. That becomes compliant for the FAA's next-gen uh, requirements for 2020. So let's unpack that a little bit because everybody, we've been hearing about ADSB out in particular now for so long that yep. the whole community of pilots is charged up about it, but most of them are saying, what do I do to comply? How do I comply? How much is this going to cost me? How long is it going to take? And then there's things like all those words you used after yep. the word dine on that makes people just kind of go, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? So try and give me some detail about what that means and how people comply then. Well, there's two things. The compliance requirement is for ADSB out, it's called. And what that is Remember there was originally mode A transponder, mode C transponder, mode S transponder, and every change with those types, more information was being given from the transponder to the receiver at the FAA. Okay. And with this, instead of having only ground-based receivers, they're using satellite and ground-based receivers to allow the FAA and the controllers and other aircraft to know more about your position, your intention, your speed, your altitude. Without having to communicate back and forth verbally. Correct. So when Mode S and all the previous ones, they were sending everything to the ground and then it was back up and like that. How is that changing? Well, uh, from, our, from our position, the, when they talk about uh, Mode ES, that's an extended squitter transponder. And instead of sending out four messages with every every blast, it's sending out like 14 messages. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So this is part of that extra data that you're talking That's about. That's correct. And uh, they're going to require everyone to have the compliant equipment by 2020 or stay out of areas where you would previously have to have mode C, let's say. So. On this model as well, we're going. There are many uh, benefits of the next-gen system that will be giving weather into the cockpit, uh, traffic, uh, TFRs, and things that we're used to getting with XM. But it'll be free broadcast from the satellites uh, to the aircraft. So in this model of the airplane, we're going to offer two options. You can either have the Dynon SV470 ADSB in or you could use a, uh, the Garmin system with a 796 GPS with a unit called a Garmin GDL39. It's a whole bunch yeah, of Yeah, a lot of letters and, and stuff things. there. So, but well, what it'll the do point is give being you component parts that bring the information to the pilot via some screen device in the cockpit, both Garmin and Dynon have it. What you're referring to so far is all in, correct? Right. Well, uh, the, right now, yes. The, uh, what we're talking about Meaning now the is information all in. is coming to the pilot right. and he can see weather, which is wonderful, yes. real time weather in the air while you're flying, Great. and traffic, which I've used and I often see the traffic on the screen before I see it visually, right. but I know where to look and it's a, it's a great help and I'm very happy for it. But that's only half of the equation. And especially with the 2020 reference here, you're talking about the full equation. Yeah, the, the, uh, the 2020 requirements are really only for out, and it's and they're saying we need you to use this new advanced transponder that tells us more about what you're doing, where you're going, what your altitude is, what your speed is, your climb rate, things like that. Again, without the pilot having to report that. In the Correct. old days, by, back when I got an instrument rating, you had to tell them all that stuff right. because they had no other way to know it. Now it's just going to be there. And not only does the controller know it, but all other pilots who are similarly equipped will know it as well, That's right? That's right. 
And so there's the big advantage. You almost take the human out of it, make it all data, and supply it to everybody all at once. It seems like that should enhance safety. It really should. Um, I will tell you, it's interesting. We flew this airplane, as a matter of fact, down to uh, Tamiami uh, a few days ago. A busy area. A busy area, and there was a lot of, a lot of bogeys on the screen. So that's <laughs> something to deal with, too. One thing is the whole system is designed for aircraft that are probably a little faster than what we, we are. So you're seeing, uh, you're seeing traffic that's pretty far out there on the horizon. But it is really good to know. And it gives you a lot of information, like what altitude they're at. Right. Which and, is a really handy thing to know, you know, where you're at. And when you know where they're at, it makes it that much easier to visually spot that other airplane. Yes, and also if they're climbing or descending. So right, that's, yeah, it gives you their too. trend as well then. The trend, exactly. So now let's go back to, in the case of the Dynon and the new gear, they just announced some gear recently that I'll be writing about on my website as well. But they've got some new stuff, this uh, extended squitter and whatnot. But they've got a pretty good price point on that so that, this business here, this 2020 deadline for the ADSB out, has been a big concern because when they first started talking about it years and years ago, we were looking at numbers like $20,000 per airplane, and yeah. most pilots are going, wait, my airplane, right. a used Cessna or whatever, it's only worth maybe twice that or maybe yeah. not even that. And to add that equipment, you're, you're going to take me out of the sky. That's all changed a lot now. So if you had one of our airplanes with the Skyview system before, and the uh, mode ES transponder from Dynon, it'll only be $600 for the compliant GPS source, which is really great. For the out source. For the out source. Okay. For becoming compliant. So that makes and you completely compliant with the 2020 deadline. That's then. right. And so that's uh, a pretty good price. They've just come out again with uh, a newer version of their software that increases the capabilities. Uh, Dynon's been very famous since the Skyview came out for improving the product free to their customers. And uh, most recently, it was part of the 2020 compliance package, but also for the 912 IS, the fuel injected versions of the engine, there's more uh, data about what the engine's doing, uh -huh. like the echo mode when you throttle back, when you're on the, the leaned out echo mode. Uh, also, if you have a, uh, a lane light flashing it'll tell you what that lane light is uh, is about oh you really need to okay land immediately. that's new since i flew with that yeah. equipment most it's a recently brand new, brand new software load yeah it's funny you know sometimes those things it gets harder and harder as you get closer to the deadline in fact this seems to be one of those reverse situations where it looked really bad at first and it's just getting better as we get closer so good for all around good for faa what they need to do with their next gen plan good for the users of the equipment and good for the sellers of the yeah, equipment. That's great. So give me some general update on flight design, the company, the airplane. What's going on lately that you care to tell us about? Well, we have had a kind of a tough couple of years with flight design after the Russian army threatened to invade our factory located in the southeast corner of Ukraine. You're very uh, near Crimea down there, right? Uh, very close. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so it's been hard for us to get enough airplanes. Uh, but Flight Design was in the process of putting up a uh, new facility in uh, China owned by a Taiwanese company called Aero Jones Aviation. And uh, we were just about to start getting airplanes from them. We're anticipating getting 2024 20, airplanes from them this year. And I'm uh, really pleased. Excellent. Uh, my heart is with the people in Ukraine. And, uh, well, that's and we not stopping. It. No, it is and not. they were never actually invaded or that's anything. It was right. all that's right. It was all saber rattling, that's as right. it's sometimes said. But yeah. it actually didn't cause any problems. Is that correct? No, specifically in the area where the factory is located. No, but it was pretty scary for a while. I'm sure. I can't and imagine it, uh, it, how that was for those. It certainly folks, didn't right? help. But they will continue building and doing what they're doing. You just now have another source of supply. Then that's both correct. Yes, they'll okay. continue making airplanes in Kherson. And uh, we are just now starting to get airplanes from the Taiwanese company, Aero Jones Aviation. So. And uh, for those that don't know, I investigated this a little bit some time ago. This is a company with some very high-tech capabilities in other fields, but have a pretty good idea what they're doing with building airplanes. Now, tell us a little bit about that just so we can reassure people that say it's coming from where now? Well, uh, they're owned by a company called GSEO, Genius electro-optical systems, and uh, they've been manufacturing in China for 20 years, and they make uh, high-end optical products like LEDs and uh, closed-circuit TVs, and also uh, closed-circuit cameras. 
and uh, also uh, the optical lenses for several types of uh, devices like the uh, Apple products and several other uh, smartphones. You know, the so this is some high lenses. demand stuff, high quality high demand, demand and stuff. High technically qualified business quality control, production management, things like that. They're a very serious group. Uh, their owner, Mr. Jones, is a real aviation enthusiast. He's owned several light sport aircraft, flying them in Excellent. Taiwan. Excellent. And uh, for all the, all the right reasons, they're getting into the business. And uh, we've been over there several times. You visited there personally? Yeah, several yeah. times. Excellent. And, uh, I'll be going over after this show again. And uh, we're very happy to be able to, to keep things going for flight design, getting parts and service and airplanes. Excellent, Tom. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us today. For those that didn't get enough information here, where do we find you on the web? Just give us the address. We'll put it up on screen. Uh, www.flightdesignusa.com. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So here we are at Sebring talking with Tom Pagini of Flight Design USA and also deeply involved with the operations in Germany, in Ukraine, and in China now as well. Uh, quite a global character here. <laughs> and you can find lots more about flight design and all kinds of affordable aviation on buydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Tom and I here at Sebring 2016.